This is a Seat Ateca with more than a sporty touch. So, since Seat is doing the own Cupra brand, they are calling this one here Cupra Ateca. We will tell you everything about it and the exterior, interior and the sporty driving experience here on a very well chosen route. I can promise you we will have a lot of fun. Here on Autogofuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The color here is called graphene gray, rather matte gray color, really cool. I think a very interesting sporty choice. There are also other colors we can show you. One is called rhodium gray, then there's a very strong red one. Or also maybe just uh, metallic black. You can choose overall from about six or seven different colors. Here the Ateca Cupra or Cupra Ateca. I always have to learn that first because you usually say the other way around, but now Officially, Cupra Ateca, since Cupra is the brand now, also gets the separate own brand logo in this copper style. It looks a little tribal rune stylish, or what do you think? I'm not too happy with the logo, I have to, I have to say, what about you? Then in the lower part, a sporty style with a comp structure grill, also in glossy black. You also have this Quattro style, like with, you know, with the Audi Quattro models, the sporty Quattro models. You have the uh, Cupra writing on the lower end and also some more sporty elements right there. This is just, um, just a decor element, however. And LED headlamps are also stand equipment. It is way more expensive than the base attacker. I'll tell you more about prices later on, but I can tell you it already really comes fully packed. Four meter 38 or 14 foot four is the total length here of the Cupra Ateca. That's the same length than the base Ateca basically. Yeah, the bumpers maybe change the length just a little bit, but that's about it. The rims, they come with 19 inch. Those ones are also the biggest choice. And this one also has some copper contrast, but there are also ones available in a normal brighter style if you prefer that. Also contrasting mirror caps here in black, then a sporty black side skirt. Other than that, the layout is the same as normal Ateca, has this design dropping line above the door handles. You see, you know, it doesn't sit too low, but a little bit lower and the wheel arches are painted in vehicle color. You get the same in the FR version of the Ateca. However, if I would pick an SUV, I always like the typical crossover style with black wheel arches. Or what about you? The Cupra Ateca already comes with bigger brake discs, but those ones here are the Brembo brake discs. They are also perforated here with those little holes for better temperature control and even a little bit bigger. So even more braking performance if you like. In the rear you have those horizontally oriented tail lamps. Of all, it's a typical hatch design at the very rear. You get then special things like the Cupra badging, those black design elements, and another real Cupra logo with this carbon fiber background, so to say. But the most important thing is this sport exhaust, and this is really four real and four exhaust pipes with some black diffuser style in there. That makes the car look aggressive from the rear. 
we don't have any hydraulic struts here, but we do have a 2 liter TFSI turbo petrol engine, 300 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque. Acceleration figure is 5.2 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. It's just 0.3 seconds slower than a Leon Cupra. Here with the Cupra Attacker. So almost equal performance figures. Transported via a 7-speed DSG dual clutch transmission automatic and also all-wheel drive standard for all Cupra Attacker. Haldex clutch, that means front plus rear-wheel drive on demand. But since you're pushing that car all the way, it will basically always have some torque on the rear wheels unless you're just cruising going at a steady speed. But in this review, the driving part, I can promise you, will have a lot of power on the rear wheels. <laughs> The key also has a carbon fiber style, it's not really carbon fiber of course. And then you also have the separate Cupra logo. Door closing sound, quite solid. And by the way, keyless entry, when you put your hand on the outside, it closes, also folds in the mirrors. And when you put your hand on the inside, it opens. Cool keyless entry function. Then Alcantara use for this sporty Cupra version. Here, for example, inside of the doors, plush material is right there. Also at the top part of the door, so this part here is also soft touch, just in the front, not in the very rear. And then, well, the interior here has a lot of different sporty elements, for example, the steering wheel with the Cupra logo, also with this carbon fiber style on the airbag cover, perforations on the side. The steering wheel has also a flat bottom, and on the inside, again, more of those copper accentuations. And those seats here, there are two seats available, two seat forms, a base sport seats, just like with the Leon Cupra. And this one here is the optional bucket seat with the integrated head restraint. It looks cooler, has more side support, especially in the upper shoulder area. It's still a comfortable seat. You can see you have enough room to move around. However, depending on your body shape, I can just say the normal base sport seats will do more comfort. Those ones here will do more holding tight sportiness. Inside always, in both cases, Alcantara and on the outside leatherette and this, um, let's call it carbon fiber leatherette here also on the very outside. So they also use sustainable materials which are sporty at the same time. This one also with the electric support for going in the front and the rear. Also with an electric lumbar support right there, if you like that. And also for the back part of the seats. So a great job definitely with seats. And you should probably try to sit in both of them and then decide which one to go for. Now let's get inside. And the advantage of having an SUV is that it's very easy to get in and out. So it's somehow relaxing, even if you're not already that old. It's just easy. <laughs> and you have this upright seating position. The Ateca is not the highest SUV, it's a compact size SUV. However, it already gives you some SUV feeling. Here again in the Cupra Ateca, you sit a little bit lower and sportier and also with the seats. So it's already then again a little bit compact hatch style feeling. However, you have a lot of room. The car is not too long, but it offers a lot of room on the interior. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 in height. Still have enough of headroom, even though we already have the panoramic roof inbuilt here. The steering column can be adjusted in height and reach. You can easily find a good position. And those bucket seats are indeed, for sporty seats, already very comfortable. So, a lot to say on the positive side note here. Well, if you look at the dashboard, there's more to tell you. Let's switch the perspective. 
pinged here. Overview, I like how they shaped it here that you have a design dropping line in the front dashboard. By the way, soft touch on the top part. Then this integration here with the design line that is resembling the exterior. An eight inch screen, the bigger one is standard with the Cupro Ateca. Also has this proximity sensor when you come closer with your hand. This is the main menu. And there's also CarPlay and Android Auto available. Soon more deals to that. Steering again in a very compact size. Digital instruments for the Cooper Ateca, 10.25 inch. Soon more deals to that because you can also change the views. Then the classic climate unit. You can control the temperature, see it in here in that screen. There's also a separate camera button here. The top view camera is optional. You can also just go for the normal rear view camera that is um, then looking just like this. Here's the rear view camera and then there's the top view next to that, but you can also make it just like this. The DSG shifting lever and there's also a drive mode selector then for Cooper mode, sport mode, normal mode, off-road. I'll tell you more about that when we drive the car very soon. And for the smartphone, there's an inductive charging pad in the very lower part, but here I've connected it with the cable for the Apple CarPlay. And the start engine button is basically pulsating like a heartbeat. Jago had that idea first, but Seat now took that over, or in this case, the Cupra brand. Those digital gauges are really flexible because here you can have this sport gauge, so to say, which is not as distracting you, but you can also have a view with the GPS map in the middle part. That might be a good standard setup, but also if you're really looking for destination, have the GPS all over the place and the speed in the right corner, or maybe like this. So this is the four style. And um, then you can also change what you want to have in the middle. Also the Apple CarPlay phone information or the assistance systems or something like that or the consumption. That is the consumption after we have driven in a very dynamic way. You can also get the consumption lower. I will tell you more about that later on in the motorway driving part. So really cool those um, fancy digital gauges. You'll also be able to get it for a normal Ateca now on in the configurator, but here it is a standard equipment. So as for the CarPlay and sound system, there's the optional Beats audio system here, which is built in, but I have to say, I mean, it's maybe better and more voluminous than the bass sound system, but as we know, the Beats audio systems are usually very bass focused and um, the DIN audio in the Tiguan was better to me. So at the same time, you can, you know, hear the music, but still use the car internal GPS. That would be important to me because that one is quite responsive and it's working very well also when you set a destination here. Great route to drive here today at um, close to Barcelona at Montserrat. So that's the GPS. You can center the position that there again. And there are also some interesting car gauges. For example, here G meter. Um, so some sport information gauges you can pick or even a lap timer. And you can still connect your phone, not only CarPlay or Android Auto, but also still with a normal Bluetooth function. The cup holders are in a different height, but not adaptive. This armrest here is well processed and some more room underneath. Interesting, by the way, we have the Cooper mode at the moment. But now if we shut off the engine and now restart the engine, it starts also in the Cooper mode, it stays that way, but the only thing that is reset is the exhaust note. So in this way at the moment, when I start the car again, everything is set on the Cooper mode, like shifting and everything, but not the exhaust. So then I have to go back to the comfort mode and then back again to the sport or the Cooper mode. And then the louder exhaust note is activated again. The reason for that is very interesting because they say they do not use a sound actuator, which would be like, you know, somewhere behind the dashboard here, um, like in Leon. So no sound actuator, no artificial sound here for the Cupra Ateca. And when they have the exhaust note activated, it is a true sound, but it's also creating more heat in the whole system. And therefore they want to reduce the heat in the system. And it's not always activated when you start the car that you really just want to induce it intentionally. And 
that I don't forget to mention it, at the inside of the doors you can very well also fit bigger bottles. Let's now open the panoramic roof, which is also still an option here for the Cupra Attica. This is the black shade you can open and have then a great view to this mountainside. And you can also open it almost completely. It's a very wide opening and also a long opening, so pretty cool. Um, almost some convertible feeling then. When getting in the rear, you cannot open that rear door so wide, but it's still, of course, easy to get inside. And this is again an advantage of this Ateca SUV. You still have enough legroom as a tall person, although it's not the longest car. So I can still fit my hand in front of my knees and also headroom wise, no problem. So with four adults, it's really good and comfortable ride. And you also sit upright here. It's really very comfortable for a rear compartment. Those performance seats, by the way, they cost you some legroom. If you go with the base sport seats, they're a little bit thinner, and then you'll have some more rear legroom if that's important to you. You also have door, uh, those um, upper handles here in the rear. You know, might be a good idea when the driver's really racing style. Good view from the panoramic roof. And also you have the same design in the front with a single seat layout, let's, let's say two single seats. You can still sit here in the middle part, although then it's a little bit higher. You have this Haldex middle tunnel. You can still sit here. Yes, it does fit also for a third adult, but it's more designed to, use, to be used on the outside seats each. And they are then quite comfortable and also already offer some side support. And you can flip the seats from here, but even easier, it will be from the rear. Last but not least, some cup holders here. They're not adaptive, but you can also use a ski hatch. That's another possibility to load just a thing through. And it has an interesting new feature here. Next to two USB supplies, you have, let's say, a small net where you can also secure a smartphone in. But that smartphone is rather tiny then, I guess. You can open the trunk either with pressing the key, pressing just here under the logo, or also with the key in your pocket with the foot kick opening mechanism like this. Works pretty well nowadays then. Let's first check the child safety test here. If there's not too much torque applied. Yes, finally they got it. So good adjustment there. And since someone asked, Yes, I will also give you some live measurements now. So the trunk in length here from the loading sill to the normal setup is 85 centimeters. The height to this level is about 55 centimeters. And just the width between the wheel arches on the inside is about one meter. Then I can also show you how it looks like with the cabin trolley inside. You can put it like this, so there's a lot of room. And also when you put it upright, see, there's still enough room left. So those are very square dimensions. You can very well use it. 510 liters is the capacity. And you can even max it up to 1,600 liters. So at the sides, you can slide the seats and they fall down quite quickly. You have a small step then here in the trunk. And if you then, I've already put the very front seat there to the front maximum position. And if you then want to load through the longest things, this is then one 85 in meters or if you go to the middle part you can even go to two meters and a little bit more and as you probably seen here this is also a ski hatch then from the rear perspective you can also just open that for loading things through Before we start with the real driving part and talking, first racing before talking in Thomas's rally driving school with a closed circuit Let's go with the launch control, ESC Sport, and also Sport gauges in the middle part. Please enjoy. Whoa, that was 180 kilometers already. That one pretty quick wide. Well, nice. Now let's start with the corners. Ah, 
high speed corners first. The car is hardly pushing me outside. Look at the progression of the steering, how I steer and how the corners go. Just a little tire scream. I can use both lanes here since it's a closed circuit. Now tight rally corner. That's a nice performance. And now, let's have some more performance and I'll also give you some more comments, but I think that was worse while just enjoying sound and agility. Or what do you think? Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge with the Cupra Ateca, 2-liter TFSI, 300 horsepower and really close to the Seat Leon Cupra horsepower figure, of course. Basically the same. And also acceleration 5.2 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour instead of 4.9 with the Leon. So almost identical. We're at the moment in comfort mode, but we'll switch it up to the sports mode soon. You can use the shift pedals at any time to go in the manual mode and then you already have the punch. You can also just go to the S shifting mode. This is just sport for the shifting then gears are turned up higher then and if you go to the sport mode then the sport shifting mode is done automatically but now also the DCC is changed so stiffer suspension from this adaptive suspension now in the Cupra mode that is even stiffer so now I get more feedback from the road but it's also getting bumpier so feel like the pop 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 the small stuff in the road you feel that in the comfort mode you can even it out so when you're just driving normal city driving and stuff we will soon also show you that later but here we want to wow what a view here at Montserrat close to Barcelona such a beautiful area and in the Cupra mode I can have some more acceleration input more throttle input there gears are turned up higher and for the sportier yeah, ride I think we'll visit this place here again. For the sport air ride, it's also good to have some more feedback then from the suspension. And for example, if I want to do some overtaking maneuver, I wait for a safe spot. And now I don't have to shift back a gear because the car is already in a lower gear. And so I can easier get to the next overtaking maneuver. There's a straight spot, get some good feedback also from the steering wheel, look at how progressive it is. So I don't have to steer that much. I just have to steer the angle of the corner. You know, in the corner again, look how balanced the car is again. Check how I steer and how the road goes. And that really feels like with being like with a Golf R on a racetrack or something. As soon as I'm getting a little bit slower or maybe there's some uphill, I still have enough torque to accelerate again. There's not much tire squeaking on the ground or something. We have to go slower just a little bit. So it's a very easy ride. So some sports cars, they will require a lot of effort in driving, but this one here is really effortless. For the sporty driving experience, those bucket seats are also doing a little bit better job to keep you tight in the seat. Faster again. However, for the normal driving in the city every day, 
you can also be just fine with the base sport seat. Depends always on the usage, on how often you take this car here out for a spin. And well, you don't feel any um, you know front wheel movement because enough torque is being transported to the rear wheels. Might be a little bit different maybe when the road is wet, but again, this all-wheel drive is doing a good job considering it's not, let's say, a standard classic all-wheel drive, just with this Haldex clutch, where then also can send some more torque to the rear. You hear also how the car is changing the gears. I don't have to do anything. You can, of course, still use the shifting pedals. Let's do that for a second. Um, but the automatic sports mode is still doing a great fun job for sure. Third gear, fourth gear, or back to third gear. It's also nice to just click the gear through. Seven speed DSG it is, what we have inbuilt here. So extreme fast shifting, it almost goes without any transition. And the best thing is, since the car is not too heavy, it doesn't push you out of the corners. It still feels somewhat light. So though at the same time, you have more comfort than you would have in a normal compact hatch. Especially for me, since I'm a little bit taller, I like to sit upright. That's why I also like to drive SUVs. And here I can have a sporty experience, but at the same time, I have really good comfort and don't have like this, oh, I'm driving a sports car, I'm having so much fun, it's really cool, oh, but my lower back pain. Oh. Here it's absolutely fine. So, co driver's verdict is good. That's always important, you know, always when I'm doing like some sporty driving, which I have to admit, if I'm at the co-driver side, so respect for all co-drivers, I hate it to be co-driver when there's like a racing clip. I just hate it. I don't want to, want to be behind the steering wheel. Um, but if the co-driver says it's a good feeling, that always speaks for the car. That speaks that the car is not pushing too far to the outside, that there are not so many G-forces on a negative uh, scale applied. So, that the car feels good, has a good balance. And the suspension is really superb with the DCC. It gives me very good feedback at the same time. It's not too rough, although we're in the sport mode already. And I mean, if you want it more comfortable, you can always go back to the comfort mode and have it a little bit softer. And such a great ride to enjoy here. And one more thing I wanted to show you is, I went to the infotainment system now and put the ESC on ESC Sport. You have it activated, ESC Sport and ESC Off. ESC Off is not recommended for road use. Also already when you go to ESC Sport, the front assist, so the autonomous emergency brake is being deactivated. So please don't use it for normal road driving. Um, the ESC Sport is rather when you do, you know, maybe some uh, track experiments or something and it also enables you to use the launch control and since there's no one behind us at the moment let me show you that just briefly then you hammer the brakes and <laughs> that was already 85 kilometers just on this very uh, short uh, road uh, strip that wow wow amazing also how harmonious the acceleration were with that all-wheel drive really very cool that's again possible ESC Sport also in the Cupra mode and then hammer all the brake brakes through with your left foot and hammer the throttle through with your right foot and the launch control is getting activated wow pretty amazing result right there other than that I mean the ESC off pff, you've seen that we didn't here, especially at the dry road, didn't reach any situation yet where the electronic control would have intervened majorly. So this doesn't make a big difference when we drive the vehicle than here on dry tarmac. It will make a big difference when we drive it, for example, on snow. I really hope we can hammer that one on, on a snow event at some point. Then we can show you even more what are the difference between EC on, EC sport and also then the complete EC off. EC off you might use that when you have an off-road situation where you need to get loose again. We also have an off-road mode here. 
that reduce the the ESP uh, activation, so you have some more wheel spin in off-road situations. However, this one here again is rather, of course, the road car. And let's see if I can overtake that CX-5 and show you some more nice last corners in a very sporty way. I can just say really enjoying this drive right here. It is definitely a big difference to a normal Ateca, which is a great car and already feels quite agile among the compact SUVs. But this one is surely a step ahead. And it is definitely comparable to a Leon Cupra. Yeah, I mean, it sits lower, it's a little bit sportier. But this one here, to me, gives a very, very good mix of having this SUV comfortable ride. And still having a great boost when you really want or need it. So we've driven this vehicle in a very agile way. But of course we want to also find out more about motorway driving and also about normal consumption and stuff. And that's what we're doing right now. So here on the motorway, let's get to a speed of normal 100 kilometers an hour. That's 60 miles an hour. And it sits very, very well on the road here too. It doesn't give you the highest SUV feeling. So it's rather a little bit compact car alike, especially here in the Cupra. Usually the Ateca already gives you an SUV feeling. But here this Cupra Ateca, it has this stiffer and lower suspension. Also together now with the sport seats, with those optional bucket sport seats, really gives you less SUV feeling and more agile driving feeling. And that is also influencing the normal driving here on the road. The overview is quite good, especially here to the front. The A-pillar is not that thick. Also what I see to the sides, so I can't complain about that at all. Very well to see also to the sides there through the mirror. However, we also have the blind spot monitor. So I'll just wait for the next car to overtake me and there it is. You see the yellow warning symbol and so as soon as it's gone, let's try again when I'm using the turning indicator. Then it's flashing, you see. So this is a, basically a second step. It's normal just appearing and then constantly flashing when you also set the turning indicator. No acoustic warning, however. That might be also an idea. Uh, other vehicles do that. It still remains very stable here at higher speeds. So you can see here very precise and small steering commands are directly transported. This very progressive steering I mentioned earlier is very, very pleasing. It's also good in everyday driving. You don't need much power, but it's still a fun and sporty way. As soon as the, or as long as the road is here quite well done, um, it's not the smoothest tarmac. No, that's not bad. We don't have any bumps in the road here or something, so we don't feel any obtrusive suspension reactions, but you do feel, of course, it's a little bit stiffer. So if you take a normal attacker, yes, you will have some more comfort. That's quite a normal thing, but this one here, you definitely pick to have the sportier experience. However, talking about other sports versions of other vehicles, this one is definitely still one you can very well use in your everyday driving life without thinking, oh my God, so I really bought only something for the racetrack and that's it. Um, so let's see, I think we have to go here. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I can also put the GPS route in the central display. However, I rather want you to see the speed that we can, you know, we can see how fast we're going right there. And if I put the central display there in that one, sometimes it's flickering on, just on camera, by the way, not uh, on, on real eyes. And here you can also see better the speed because when the GPS in the middle part, the speed goes to the right and then you it's blocked for your view here from the steering wheel. Steering wheel has really the good size for that also that you can combine sportiness and the normal driving fun. So the seats 
as said earlier, available in two versions with a bucket optional and a non-bucket as a standard. As I said, also proved by driving, you know, it's the same then in the Seat Leon or the Leon Cupra. For bucket seats, they're still quite good, nice and look, of course, really sporty, awesome. But for your normal comfort, I would rather go the, with the base sport seats, also save the money. And you also leave you some more leg room in the rear. That's, um, that's another important aspect for sure. But of course, it depends on the, um, on the body always. There was a, now a wave, by, by the way. It was quite hard, so the re reaction from suspension was noticeable. However, still you don't get all the back pain, maybe if there's some bumps in the road, so that's still okay. The size of the car is really pleasing, by the way. So if you think about some mid-size SUVs, which are available in sporty versions, they are already bigger than this here with the compact SUV segment. So this car still feels easy to maneuver and move around. Now it's getting a little bit closer here on the motorway and think, oh, wait a minute, I have to get to the right side or something. I wouldn't be afraid now to take the next gap right here because the car is not that big. It's an interesting comparison because at the moment I'm also driving the BMW X3 and which is a mid-size SUV and basically the segment above this vehicle and you feel a difference that it's really way bigger indeed. It's influ influencing your driving but also then you can feel that noise insulation wise this guy is not bad at all but it doesn't match a BMW X3 by far. So this is some of the differences then you still have No idea where I have to go now. I think here and then right, I guess. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, this is here a very expensive Ateca with uh, over 40,000 euros, yes. But if you then compare which other SUVs you could buy with this horsepower and you know the, the equipment you get, then it's still quite an attractive deal. However, some of the differences are that the X3, for example, is way more silent. So noise insulation wise, again, it's not bad, but there's still some room for improvement for sure. Great to have the blind spot monitor again. That's a definitely good asset. The front assist, the, the autom autonomous emergency brake is a standard equipment, by the way. So that's coming with all of the cars here. And I think that should be mandatory nowadays for all vehicles anyway. So, so far I think I'm quite satisfied by the performance here on the motorway. You can really use it all, not only for the agile driving and if you buy a very well specced Ateca anyway, it really goes up in the price and then the distance here to the Cupra is not so far. Let's now go for the assistance systems. Adaptive cruise control set in here. You can set it with a separate column at the steering wheel. Now the distance of the car in front of us being kept. And by the way, noise insulation wise, here always see what difference the tarmac surface makes. And this is a newer tarmac here. And you immediately hear that it's more silent. The other tarmac there, the older one, that was noisier, definitely. So let's go to the middle lane. Now the ACC, I'm not doing anything, is accelerating just a little bit. It's actually a very confident drive and also with the ACC and good also for traffic situations, for example. And also here on the motorway, you can relax just a little bit more and also just concentrate on the traffic and, you know, relax yourself that you don't have to... Uh, oh, wait a minute, that's a new... You know, with the speed limit, maybe I exceed it again or so. I just set it now to 100 kilometers and that's it. And the speed is being kept. And if someone starts to brake in the front, it's also reducing the speed. Also, one of the options uh, I would definitely go for. Luckily, the Cupra Ateca is almost full spec, almost full packed. So you, there's hardly any options you can still pick for that. But I think it's also good because we have so many vehicles that are already very, very expensive. But then you can still put so many more options in that one. 
I think so it's good that they have an overall complete package right here. Again, a good stability and also now more silent as well. Noise insulation with the Tarbuck is a little bit better. And let's take a look at the consumption figure when we were just basically rolling, so to say, we're using cruise control. And that is now at eight liters on 100 kilometers. You know, that's um, more something, um, you know, more than 20 mpg, so then leaning towards towards 30 but if you think about realistic with also city driving involved you can also drive this one with nine liters or towards 10 which would be then more towards the 20 mpg figure so it always depends on the throttle input this is for sure not an engine that is really fuel saving the two liter tsi is a great engine as for the the silence actually i don't hear it at all at the moment so it's a very refined engine and we've seen that earlier i can do some acceleration now soon again it gives you really great performance so such a performance output here with 5.2 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour with a rather small engine it's really amazing stuff but then again the consumption of those engines is usually quite high so that should be lower definitely I mean, if you want another performance SUV, which is basically similar, you could go a little bit bigger now with the Skoda Koyak RS using the 2.0-liter TDI, It was in the Tiguan R before. Mm. You know, it's a question if you want to go for the petrol or the diesel. The diesel then for long-term commuters, but also this diesel with the bi-turbo is getting quite high consumption figures. So. Um, you know, when you want this performance, you also have to pay more at the fuel station. You can also get a little bit lower if you're just cruising around, but then again, at some point, you also want to hammer the throttle and let it drop here just a little bit. Now we can do that once more because so far we were in the comfort mode. As soon as we hop to the sport mode, I also get this little bit louder exhaust note. And I can also accelerate a little bit better the DCC, that's a dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension, it's now set a little bit stiffer and also the throttle is reacting a little bit earlier and the gears are turned up higher in the RPMs. Even more so in the Cupra mode where I went now and if I now do for example again some 70 kilometers to 100. So here we have the gauges for you. And let's go. Oh, that's already it. That was already one on ten. So again, great performance. And when you're just getting off the motorway, it's really fun. <laughs> and this Cooper mode really does change the character of the vehicle. So if you're in the normal comfort mode, the exhaust stays silent, the suspension is softer, the whole vehicle is more silent and somehow relaxing. And when you put it in the sports or in the Cooper mode, with the exhaust node, with the direct throttle input, really changes a lot. You can always use the shifting pedals as well. And then the car gets really aggressive so this one is really a vehicle where you can choose a lot between a normal comfortable city SUV and if you want so a rather aggressive sports SUV I think that's also the thing they wanted to achieve and indeed we can say that they have achieved that so also here on the motorway or relaxing ride run very good performance from the Cooper Attacker And now to our conclusion for today with the Cupra Attacker. Well, it is for sure a big difference to the normal Attacker, which is already quite dynamic and sporty in this compact SUV segment. You can really compare the performance acceleration-wise and also dynamic-wise with the Leon Cupra. Yes, it sits a little bit higher and the Leon Cupra is maybe a little bit sportier. This one here with a great performance, also in the corners, it stays very stable. It doesn't push you out of the corners. 
you always have enough power reserves so that engine is giving you a lot of performance however this one can still be used as a comfortable everyday sports car so this is also to me one of the big advantages since it's still an suv you have a sporty touch but you can still have it as a cruiser and also with a lot of luggage in the rear and it's a good package on the inside for the spaciousness.